Good morning, everyone. How you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now, this morning, we are in Bushy Mead Cemetery and we are looking for Alma Angela Kogan. Uh, she was a singer. She died quite young and she's here in this cemetery and we will have a look for her and I will tell you about her real soon. Now, don't forget, if you like the video today, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't done so already, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to. It's absolutely free. And uh, this cemetery is massive. It is such a big place. Um, now, she was a good, good friend of the Beatles as well. So I'll tell you a bit more about that if you don't, don't know anything about her. Um, and we'll get on with it and I'll tell you about her life right now. Alma Angela Cohen Kogan. Born the 19th of May 1932 to the 26th of October 1966 was an English singer of traditional pop in the 1950s and early 1960s, dubbed the girl with a giggle in her voice. She was the highest paid British female entertainer of her era. She was born on the 19th of May 1932 in Whitechapel, London. She was of Russian, Romanian, Jewish descent. Her father's family, the Kogans, arrived in Britain from Russia, while her mother's family were refugees from Romania. Kogan's parents, Mark and Faye Kogan, had another daughter, the actress Sandra Karen, who went on to play Mumsy in The Crystal Maze, and one son, Ivor Kogan. Although Jewish, she attended St Joseph's Convent School in Reading. Her father was a singer, but it was Kogan's mother who had show business aspirations for both her daughters. She had named Kogan after silent screen star Alma Taylor. She first performed in public at a charity show at the Palace Theatre in Reading and at the age of 11 competed in the Sussex Queen of Song contest held at a Brighton hotel winning a prize of £5. Age 14 she was recommended by Vera Lynn for a variety show at the Grand Theatre in Brighton and in July 1947 she appeared there for a week with Max Miller. In November 1947 she appeared in the show Dick Turpin's Ride to York at the Grand Brighton. At 16, she was told by band leader Ted Heath, you've got a good voice, but you're far too young for this business. Come back in five years time. Heath would later say letting her go was one of the biggest mistakes of my life. She also found work singing at tea dances while also studying dress design at Worthing Art College and was soon appearing as a chorus girl in the musical High Button Shoes at the London Hippodrome in November 1948. And in a review called Source Tata at the Cambridge Theatre, in London, May 1949. She became resident singer at the Cumberland Hotel in London in 1949, where she was spotted by EMI producer Walter Ridley, who became her coach and signed her to HMV. Kogan's first release was To Be Worthy of You and Would You, recorded on her 20th birthday. This led to her appearing regularly on comedian Dick Bentley's BBC radio show Gently Bentley, and then becoming the vocalist for the BBC radio comedy programme Take It From Here, replacing Joy Nichols from 1953 to the end of its run in 1960. In 1953, whilst in the middle of recording If I Had A Golden Umbrella, she broke into a giggle. She then played up the effect on later recordings. Soon enough, she was dubbed the girl with the giggle in her voice. Many of her recordings were covers of US hits, especially those recorded by Rosemary Clooney, Teresa Brewer, Georgia Gibbs, Joni James and Dina Shaw. Her voice was often compared with Doris Day's. One of these covers, Bow Bottom Blues, became her first hit, reaching number four on the 3rd of April 1954. Kogan would appear in the UK singles chart 18 times in the 1950s, with Dreamboat reaching number one. Other hits from this period included I Can't Tell a Walks from a Tango, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, Sugar Time, and The Story of My Life. Kogan's first album, I Love to Sing, was released in 1958. She was one of the UK's first recording artists to appear frequently on television, where her powerful voice would be showcased along with her bubbly personality and dramatic costumes. Kogan topped the annual NME Readers Poll as Outstanding British Female Singer four times between 1956 and 1960. The UK musical revolution of the 1960s, symbolised by the rise of the Beatles, suddenly made Kogan unfashionable. In the 1991 BBC documentary Alga Kogan, The Girl with the Giggle in Her Voice, Lionel Blair said she was perceived as square. Her highest 1960s chart ranking in the UK was number 26 with We Got Love, and most of her successes at this time were abroad, notably in Sweden and Japan. She was especially disappointed that her 1963 cover of the Exciter's US hit, Tell Him, did not return her to the UK charts. 
according to singer Eddie Grasson. She continued to be a popular figure on the UK show business scene, being offered parts of Nancy in Oliver, appearing on the teenage hit show Ready Steady Go and headlining at the Talk of the Town. Cogan lived with her widowed mother in Kensington High Street at 44 Stafford Court in a lavishly decorated ground floor flat where she frequently entertained other celebrities. Regular visitors included Princess Margaret, Noel Coward, Cary Grant, Audrey Hepburn, Michael Caine, Frankie Vaughan, Bruce Forsyth and Roger Moore. John Lennon once recalled that when he was a teenager, he used to mimic her savagely during his time at the Liverpool College of Art. Lennon's wife Cynthia also recalled John and I thought of Alma as out of date and unhip. But after Lennon actually met Cogan on the TV pop show Ready Steady Go in 1964, they became close friends. So much so that Cogan's sister Sandra later said that the pair had a serious romance that had to be kept secret because of Alma's family's strict Jewish belief and faith. Cogan was close to the other Beatles, especially Paul McCartney, who first played the melody of Yesterday on her piano. He also played the tambourine on her recording of I Knew Right Away. Cogan tried to update her image by recording some Beatles numbers and a spin-off from the man from Uncle, Love Ya Lilia. But by 1965, record producers were becoming dissatisfied with Cogan's work and it was clear that her health was failing. Her friend and colleague, Anne Shelton, attributed this decline to some high experimental injections she took to lose weight, claiming that Cogan was never well again after that. Cogan embarked on a series of nightclub dates in the north of England in early 1966, but collapsed after two performances and had to be treated for stomach cancer. She made her final TV appearance in August on the guest spot of International Cabaret. The following month, she collapsed while touring Sweden to promote Hello Baby, recorded exclusively for the Swedish market. She died of ovarian cancer at London's Middlesex Hospital on the 26th of October at the age of 34. In deference to family custom, her death was observed with traditional Jewish rites, with burial at the Jewish cemetery in Bushy, Hertfordshire. Now I've got to say a quick hello to Michael Panay, I think he said his name was, uh, one of the groundsmen here, really cool. Um, and he said AJ as well, so I don't know if AJ's the other lad or that's his nickname, but hi Michael, AJ, and all the guys here, been tremendous, really helpful, and just giving me a little bit of uh, background knowledge on the place as well. Anyway, so there's all the information on Alma Hay Fever playing up again. Angela Cogan. And uh, I've been having a good, good look around. And do you know what? I think I found it. Here we go. Wow. Lots of text on here. Let's pull back a little bit. Okay. In treasured and unforgettable memories of a most wonderful and adored daughter, Alma Cogan, who passed away the 26th of October 1966. She was more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire were not to be compared unto her. Whilst life and memory last we will remember, oh for the touch of a vanished hand and for the sound of a voice that is stilled, Deeply loved and so greatly missed by her mother, sister and brother, also sister-in-law, nephew, niece, aunts and uncles, great aunts, great uncles, relatives and a large circle of dear friends. Rest in peace, my darling. I will always remember Stan. And then down there on the record, in ever-loving memory of dear Alma from her devoted fans. Wow. So there we had the final resting place of Alma Cogan there. And what an amazing voice she had. If you haven't heard her, go and listen to some of her stuff, especially her rendition of some of the Beatles work. Uh, of course we could have, uh, who was the other? Yeah, just a minute. Shirelles what is this? Come back, come what's this going on here? We've got a campaign going on. You never noticed. Oh, I know, how about, how about, how about, say, how about playing T -T Tennessee Waltz by Alma Warren? <laughs> um, Obviously a very, very talented young lady, popular young lady as well. And bless you, um, Alma, and thank you for the music. So if you don't know who Alma is, go check her out, have a listen. Um, and it's such a shame, isn't it? When, again, a young person's taken at such a young age and they have such an aspiring 
um, and wonderful opportunity or career ahead of them. Um, and then it's just sadly taken away. Anyway, that is it from me today from Watford. Don't forget, if you like the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. And uh, it's absolutely free. I, I must stress that, and I do stress that all the time because I still get people saying to me, I don't want to pay to subscribe to the channel. Not in that voice, but I don't want to pay to subscribe. And you don't pay anything to subscribe to the channel. It's just free. You just hit the subscribe button uh, and a notification bell as well. And you'll be notified when more ooh, videos come out. See, I risk life and limb for you guys. I trip over cornerstones. I fall down all the time. You don't see it. Um, I'm very clumsy. Um, and this is what I do and I risk. So that's got to be worth a thumbs up. Anyway, I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Tell her, oh, hang on. He's looking at you, looking at me, looking at you. We're always being watched. Remember that wherever you go in life, someone's always got a big brother on you. See you all on the next one. Take care.